A Murder at the End of the World, Season 1, Episode 6, Chapter 6, Crime Scene, S-E-E-N, very nice, Thoughts. Spoilers for these first six episodes, another episode I love. Let's dive right in. So, the, yeah, the editing draws a parallel between when, you know, when there was a fire on the, you know, conspiracy wall of clues, and Darby currently being underwater. Again, this thing of, you know, in a situation out of her control because she's not being careful enough. And not not to victim blame, but, you know, yeah. Um, that's something these last couple of episodes have gotten into, that she, you know, she said it very early in the season. She's not always quite careful enough, but it's especially come to a head here. And, yeah, she is rescued, and Lee confirms that she was the one who did the Morse code. And, yeah, so the it's revealed that the, the, um, the lid shutting was done by hacking. It wasn't the, the person who was present, seemingly. And, yeah... Um, Darby makes a really good point that Lee looks guilty based on these things, and yeah, Lee explains, you know, it started out as little things, uh, and he called Zoomer my son, my boy, never ours, and, uh, you know, over time, these little things became big deals, and that, I, I really love that, that's, that's exactly how it is. You know, early on, you're willing to forgive. You know, she's basically describing ignoring red flags. You know, she... <clears throat> because th that's the thing. It's not just, you know, on day one or from day to day. You know, suddenly, it's it's this really extreme thing. There's, you know, you it, it builds to that. That, you know, there's a lot of people who ended up in toxic relationships who will tell you that, you know. And, yeah, we get the payoff to, you know, I, I picked up little things I mentioned in earlier videos on the show, and, and here, you know, Lee comes right and says it, Andy controls every aspect of Zoomer's life. You know, that's the thing about you know why wasn't he allowed to take a little little bite of of the you know of the, yeah of someone else's food you know yeah he's he's being extremely controlling because you know on it, it's it would be one thing if all Andy was really doing was trying to prolong his own life but he's also trying to mold his son in a way that his mother thinks is unhealthy, and that's a major red flag, you know, the, so, so, yeah, really appreciate, I'm not going to lie, there was a time when I was a little worried that they were trying to, like, make us empathize with this tech billionaire, like, I try to empathize with everyone, but, like, if you look at what we know about tech billionaires, you know, they 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 continue to make these choices that make the world a worse place. You know, it's much, much easier to make choices that make the world a better place if you have a lot of money. You know, you're not being forced into doing the wrong thing to make sure you and your family survive. You can do whatever you want. You know, there's almost no one who can actually stop you, truly. And they continue to make these terrible choices. So, <clears throat> was a little bit worried that the show was trying to make a, you know, it was being like, you just don't understand. Look, if we spend enough time with a tech billionaire, I'm sure you'll realize you know, he's a great person, but no, they were building to this reveal. We learned just enough about him that, you know, if this had been, like, in episode one, you know, oh, by the way, the tech billionaire is an abusive, you know, it would have come, 
Like, it would have been credible, but it wouldn't have felt like a payoff to anything. It would have come much too soon. You know, if you think back to those earliest episodes, he was very enigmatic. You know, he sends Ray to recruit Darby to, to go with on, on the retreat. And, you know, he'll make these big speeches and, you know, he'll say things that make him seem relatable. But, you know, yeah, over time we realize the yeah there's more there and yeah uh in an earlier episode zoomer said you know he doesn't like seeing his parents fight and you know it's one of those things where like you know yeah at the time we think well you know I, you know it of course he doesn't but you know parents fight that's not you know it's not a bad thing that two people who are romantically involved argue over things, you know, that's actually healthier than if they keep everything, you know, locked up, because then eventually it's going to explode. But now we see, you know, Zoomer essentially lacked the, the vocabulary, and, and that's, there's, there's a lot of, that's something you see a lot in the real world, you know, small children, they'll maybe try to indicate something that's actually bad, and, you know, yeah, a lot of people, you know, you hear that. I'll, I'll admit, you know, I've made this mistake I did when watching this show, and that's something I really think they did a great job. You know, Zoomer doesn't immediately, you know, because Darby's like, you know, yeah, I, I get that, you know, par parents fighting, it sucks. You know, if, if Zoomer had immediately followed up, no, I mean, he hit her, you know, then it'd be like, okay, you know, this, you know, but no, you know, instead, at this point, we think back, and they, uh, that's that's what he means. Zoomer is upset because, you know, as, as Lee points out, and I appreciate we only see it once, but because it's absolutely not necessary to show more than once, yeah, Zoomer has seen Andy hit Lee many times, and he can't do anything about it, and she tried to run, and he caught up to her, you know. So, yeah, um, that really, and, and this, yeah, you know, we get an explanation for the fake ideas and all that. So I really appreciate that. You know, because, yeah, like, by the end of episode five, you know, last week's episode, I was thinking, you know, maybe Lee is the one. Oh, cool, she actually, uh, uh, the actress playing Lee, Britt Marling, directed this episode. Did she direct multiple? Um, so, so, yeah, to fill the dead air. Um, oh, that's right, yeah, she's actually, she's one of the creators of the of the show and uh, yeah she directed three episodes total one five and six very cool um, incredibly talented woman um, so yeah um, let's see the the um, yeah, you know, and now you have the, because cause it looked like, oh, you know, she's going to kill some people, and then she's going to disappear with her new identity, you know, it's, and, and she, you know, Darby pointed out, you're always carrying this bag that has this, you know, the fake ID and all this stuff, you know, you look like you're always trying to escape, or always ready to, which, yeah, that's the kind of thing, I'm just going to make sure. Doubt it's super important, but just to make sure. Uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, turns out it was important. Um, yes, and now it's been dealt with. Yes, the the. <clears throat> that that really makes her look guilty and the the yeah you know now we've had you know that's the it, it was a red herring is you know there we go and yeah so the um yeah and and yeah lee points out you know they are they're trapped there and yeah we get you know yeah, this tech billionaire, 
is a control freak and he's extremely powerful and he's basically you know it is yeah um darby says you know you were doxxed and and this you know you thought you were trying to get away from that only to realize andy is that you know and and yeah you know yeah he said you know you can go but zoomer stays she you know she would have to give up her her son and i really appreciate that that's you know I, I acknowledge some some would say it's you know I, I recently watched um you know it's kind of old video by Caleb Gammon we talked about how in Tenet you know it was very much this thing of it was it was very first wave feminism this thing of you know a woman caring so much about her her son so I acknowledge you know this this is that same thing. Um, but I do appreciate that it's not, you know, when, whenever you have a, a prominent female character doing something that, you know, could be interpreted as wrong, which technically she did kidnap her own son, which, you know, you understand why we empathize with her, but that's actually the kind of thing that in real life many times goes horribly wrong, you know. Sure, some some of them, some of these kidnappers would say, I, "I did it for the safety of my child." But you know, it's it can it can. There's a there's a really bad history there, and I, I appreciate that there's no like misogynist tropes here. It's not that oh, you know, she just wanted to hurt Andy, uh, this poor guy. You know, why why didn't she give him everything? Kind of thing. So. Yeah, really appreciate. You know, that's not how I feel, but that's sadly how a lot of people interpret uh, these things. Uh, you know, I, there's actually the the editing room's abridged script somehow has an extremely misogynistic read of the movie Ted, which like I'm not saying that movie's perfect, but you gotta admit Seth MacFarlane put a lot of effort into m making it misogynist proof, like. Watch that movie carefully. He went. He goes through a lot of. He, he jumped through a lot of hoops to make sure that even the most raging misogynist can appreciate. Okay, this is not a bad woman. This she's actually trying. You know, and somehow they did. I I can't I can't rule out that it's a troll, but it just yeah. Anyway, um, you know, bigotry doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. There's just an emotional component to it that overrides all logic. But yeah, here it's completely clear. You know, it really is. Let's see. And yeah, you know, she explains. She she talks about you know. Oh, you know, I I saw that cabin in the woods, and I was so relieved because she would literally rather have to deal with Kandarian demons than Andy. And yeah. Andy had had popped up, and Bill has no idea that Andy is this awful controlling person. So you know, it's, you know, yeah, he's he's smiling and laughing. He thinks you know, cause and and that's the thing that it's it's so great that this scene is purely from Lee's perspective, because yeah, from Bill's perspective, oh, you know, Andy, yeah, the, you know, he's. He's doing this, this, and this that sound really positive. You know, these are these are good ideas. He's going to make the world a better place. But from Lee's certain point of view, he's evil. So, did that make it sound like... No, you already know. By this point in the video, you know I am 100% Team Lee. But yeah, um, and that is, that is how... From what I understand, I'm, I haven't experienced it firsthand, obviously, but that is how a lot of women feel when, you know, yeah, they, they thought that they were safe from a misogynist only to realize, you know, he, he can blend in so well that people she thought she could trust, yeah, are, are going to, you know, cozy up to the misogynist. And let's see. Yeah, um, some great tension about you know someone is is coming and and Lee picks up a heavy object, 
and <clears throat> both of the ring keys have been disabled so you know clearly there's something and turns out to be Oliver and he explains you know David is distracting Andy and you know the and and yeah he suggests they go to to his to, to Oliver's room and you know there's that thing why because no one's looking for me which that is a really excellent point and you know it's one of those things where you can understand why they ended up not getting to to Oliver's room you know when they were caught they were still in Bill's room you know but it it is that thing of, you know oh if only you'd taken the good advice you know he even points out we shouldn't stay here this is not going to this is not a tenable situation and then we have the yeah um you know they're going over the evidence in Bill's room i appreciate Oliver pointing out you just smelled his clothing which is still it's still a little weird you know you under, you understand why she does it but it is still just the tiniest little bit and and i really love the editing there that you know she sniffs it and immediately we see him smile you know it takes her back to the first moment that they were in person together and yeah i i don't have to tell you i'm just going to be stating the obvious here the first time that we're in physical proximity to someone that we care about means a lot to us and let's right especially if until then you'd only known them online you hadn't met them in person before but you built a relationship online and yeah i suppose not everybody has had that experience and let's see then we have the yeah um you know someone edited themselves out of the the footage and which you know again uh an important that's yeah there's going to be some payoff to that in the finale next week six days from now and then we have the uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Darby, you know, goes over how it must have been for Bill in those final moments, and the thing about you know he wanted her to see something in the book. And yeah, I, I like Oliver's little line about I don't think it's the right time to start a book club. And let's see. yeah, and we get a, a flashback. And at first it felt like it was slightly self-indulgent, like we've seen this before, but, you know, they were, they were setting the, the circumstance back up. And, yeah, you know, we get the answer the, that was raised very early in episode one. What exactly happened? Like, you know, yes, obviously... The killer killed himself. That's there's that was never in question. That was clear from the moment that we heard a gunshot, and was aware that Darby and Bill survived that encounter. Yeah, there's no doubt that the the killer suicided. But something else happened. You know, she Darby specifically stops reading at at that point, which you know again like on first at first glance it's like oh you know keeping us in suspense but it is also yeah you know there's there's clearly something there that that we do you know and and yeah when bill thought that the gun was being raised to shoot them he stepped in front of darby you know the moment that the the gun was starting to be raised not the moment you know when they saw the gun they started reciting names but when the gun was raised and he didn't know yet where the the bullets are going to start flying without hesitation he steps in front to to protect her and then afterwards she, yeah she can't really it, it's my read that she's not ready to to process 
the the emotions about you know she's she's like trying to find meaning in the in the killer and you know yeah it's it's a very you know while they are both like literally and figuratively very like they're in a they're in a in an exposed situation they're being very intimate and like he's trying to to really process this and and wants her to as well and she's very resistant to it and and yeah this is of course what leads to him leaving and ludditing i think that should be a verb and right i i appreciate the the detail so you know right after the the suicide like she's immediately like okay uh we got to get back out of here the the this thing we can together we can move this thing and climb and get out and he is like stunned because yeah like he had he was trying to process the fact that they were going to die and he wanted to make sure if there was a chance at all that he would be able to save her and also the detail that he's hearing goes that's something that there's so many movies and shows don't get into about but it's 100 percent accurate your hearing goes when you uh, crap lost my train of thought uh, uh because of loud noise you know of a of a gunshot and you know there's this brief like tinnitus uh, um symptom thing and I love that, you know, so, so yeah, Darby has to, to get help, so, you know, runs to the, to the nearest neighbor, and, you know, says there, there's been, um, a murder in, in 394, and, you know, the neighbor's like, that's, that's, ah, crap, what was his name, ah, that's the killer's old place, ah, you know, that, that thing is constantly going off the market, back on the market, ah. You know how he is, you know. It's it's very much like, oh yeah, she she knows him, you know. This, but and and Darby says Patricia is in there, and the neighbor goes, Patty. She never left, you know. And and the you know and and immediately, she's like, um, husband, get get the phone, you know. And yeah, you know she's she's on the phone with nine one one, and yeah, you know she ends up having to hand the phone to to Darby because what all she can her all she herself can get out is not really, to, you know yeah yeah it's this thing you know okay so Patricia uh, uh, Patricia Betting never left she's she's still here you know and and like the nine one one we don't hear. Too much of what the man will operate. Maybe not even anything, but you know, this. So you know, yeah, the nine one one operator is trying to get something useful out of, and and the neighbor, you know, she's too close to it. She can't completely, you know, and and you know, hands. Darby gets the phone and she's she's all business. She you know, here's the address. Here's who's involved. Here's the situation. You know, everything just. I, I really love that Darby doesn't say, you know, your neighbor's a killer. Because the neighbor's going to immediately be like, no, he's not. I have known him for so many years. He's the nicest guy you will ever meet. You know, instead, she says, you know, Patricia Betting is is dead. You know, I, I found Patricia Betting dead. Some, something like that, you know. And that immediately, because that's like it it in um, it evokes this female solidarity, where you know, sadly, we men don't do a good enough job making women feel safe, making sure they are safe, as as safe as at all possible, at least. And and so they have to you know yeah they have to help each other and the moment that that comes you know so so cuz cuz that's the thing you know yeah this this neighbor woman she definitely knows you know what was it um it wasn't 
yeah, I, I don't remember what his name is, Killer. She knows him, she thinks she knows him, but she definitely also knows Patricia. You know, she's been living there long enough that she remembers Patricia. And yeah, she thought, you know, oh, Patricia left. You know, people leave. That's a thing that happens. And the idea that she was killed, you know, yeah, it's like, okay, you know what, this, this needs to be dealt with. And let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. When we have the, you know, Bill asks Darby, you know, she, he's he's like, I want to know how you feel, you know, and and she's yeah, she's really struggling to to, you know, process it, and and yeah, you know, the the Bill left because she was not emotionally available. And we saw that, you know, I think it was last week's episode, but we've certainly seen it in an earlier episode where, you know, he's like, you know, the first time I knew I loved you. And, and she's like, oh, don't, you know, that's, you know, she can't really deal with that right now. And, you know, eventually she does manage to, to talk about, you know, the first time she knew she loved him and and in this episode you know she says i i'm scared that i am not able to meet love you know and the the um, let's see uh it, yeah again you know there's a lot of, of fiction where if a man leaves it's because he thinks that the the woman he's leaving his current partner for is more sexually attractive and there is sadly some truth to that there are and and you know that has happened a lot i'm not downplaying that but this is one of a number of cases where it was other qualities you know that's something that you know and i'm not yeah that that it doesn't get talked about enough and i'm not saying that that's like oh women are so certain no it's it's very frequently men who act like it's it's misogynists who can't really accept that men have emotional needs you know and there are women out there who can't meet those needs you know that doesn't make you a bad person but yeah if if you simply cannot there there is you know a number of, of cases, yeah, eventually the guy will leave and try to find someone emotionally available, you know, so, yeah, um, quite appreciate that, and, let's see, yeah, and they, you know, yeah, Darby says, uh, you know, she doesn't like crying, and the others are like, it's, it's good to cry, though, it's like throwing up, it was, you know, it's better to have it done. And then they talk about, you know, maybe it's Lume, maybe because, you know, the smart city thing, it's not just, oh, the lights are, you know, turn on and off by themselves. No, it's like constant tracking. And this is actually something that China is doing to its citizens, which doesn't mean you should attack Asian immigrants in in the West, but you know, speak out against China. That you know, the Chinese government is. But but yeah, and um, you know, Ava may have you know yeah. There's that thing about you know. I think she's in love with with Andy, you know, and all these treatments. Yeah, you know, they they she sees him as this brilliant visionary because she's not the one getting hit by him she probably she might not even know that lee is being hit by him we don't know if she personally has witnessed it and i can imagine todd doesn't say things like that to and and the um yeah and and to andy you know oh ava you know she's she's making sure i can live longer you know she's saving my life <clears throat> And the episode ends with the, the, what's it called? Um, yeah, um, you know, David is, is hit against the, the door and the door opens and, and, you know, it's Todd, 
brutalizing David, and Andy is there, and he only has a few words, but they're very choice. There is my wife. You know, it's it's very it's you know it's it's possessive. It's not like what's the word? Um, it's not this like loving thing of like. I was so worried about you. No, it's, you know, he wants to know where she is at all times. You know, so, yeah. I mean, her, um, her ring key did not get turned off by accident. He didn't want her to have a lot of freedom of movement. Now, let's see. I think that is all that I have to say about this episode. But, yeah, um, really, really excited. Uh, Sorry about that keyboard really excited to see the the ending um yeah like so yeah uh, at this point i'm fairly yeah I'm, I'm confident david is not you know yeah he's he's not doing this no, nor is oliver but yeah lume ava I think there's a chance that Andy is not like intent. You know, they, they yeah, they made a pretty good case. Andy is not behind this, but he wants to know who is. You know, and uh, let's see. I think that I feel like there's one more thing that I wanted to. Right, right. The thing about you know, oh, I mean, it's not very far. We could travel to the Zodiac. And, and, you know, I don't know how I think Ted Cruz is going to be of any help. He, you know, th this is like a really cold environment. He would have left long ago, but whatever. I'm sure they know what they're doing. But the, yeah, this thing of, you know, the, the crew must be close by. You know, they never leave the captain behind. Um, yeah, I, I, um... I'm I'm really excited to see where it it's you know yeah the the resolution the so so yeah what's left is the the we're gonna get the what's the word we're gonna we're gonna learn who is um is is killing people and exactly why and yeah, I I don't know how they're going to resolve, you know, like Lee did what she could to to escape and it wasn't quite enough. Yeah, I I don't know how I mean, I suppose it's possible that it's going to have a downer ending and and there is no no justice for for her. Um yeah, we'll we'll see. Right, one more thing. Um yeah, so so you know, yeah, uh, Lee thought that she was escaping from the, you know, the, the, the yeah, the, the vulnerability, the, where she had gotten doxxed and, and this whole thing by, you know, Andy, because he seems like he's going to, to protect, you know, he's very, you know, yeah, the word is controlling, but before you realize that it's controlling behavior, you might just see it as, you know, being, yeah, being protective of someone. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, he would have the technology to prevent her from getting doxxed again. And, and, you know, if hypothetically someone did try to come to her place, if, if it's Andy's place, you know, he has security. So it's, it's, you can understand why she thought this is it, you know, this is going to work. But, sadly, many times, I'm, I'm not saying there's no good men out there, um, I try to be one, but, sadly, there are people who are gonna, you know, he wasn't, he didn't see Lee and think, I should protect her, he saw her and thought, sure, I could, you know, she needs, she's, she's vulnerable, I'm a predator, you know, he probably wouldn't put it like that, but that is, you know, this is predatory behavior. 
and he pounces, you know, and, and this is sadly the kind, we've seen it a lot in real life. So I really appreciate this, you know, this could serve as a warning, uh, you know, be, be extremely careful the, the, with the first people you meet after you've been targeted and, and harassed and such, because there are people who are going to take advantage and yeah. Um, and the thing, you know, he, he, as a tech billionaire, he wants to control everything, you know. So he sees in her a woman who is very easy for him to control because she doesn't have a lot else, you know. There's, there's not really anybody else protecting her. So, and, and, yeah, there's, there's, in, in real life, countless cases of tech billionaire predatory behavior.